Here's the reality. Our microbiome, or the tens of trillions of microorganisms living within us at this very moment, the ones with their tentacles of wisdom and just about every single biological function that we have, is in its worst collective state from a population perspective that it's ever been. Keep that in mind as we explore this psychological condition which affects over 300 million people on this beautiful floating rock. Because, who knows, there could be a connection. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are taking a journey inward, exploring the roots and potential cures to our overthinking, overanalyzing, and scenario making, our anxiety. Because just like every other physiological and psychological state, this one has its evolutionary reasons for existence as well. Mainly to keep us properly on edge in the right scenarios. Like when traveling into uncharted territory, so we don't get hunted, killed, eaten, and, well, you get the point. The modern day dilemma that we intelligent walking apes face is that this life-saving system has gone kinda haywire dealing with our present day societal norms. So much so that the condition of anxiety impacts millions of people in a crippling way each and every day. Driving our shelves to be filled with bottles of medication to take the edge off so we as a society can just live. I know, there's gotta be another way. And I have a story which I'd like to share which may shed some light on how. It was recently written in Seeds, a gut health company's blog, and it beautifully lays out in a scientific way how the most effective chill pills may be closer than you think, and not, in fact, a pill at all. This is the origin story of benzodiazepines, or the most prevalent class of anti-anxiety medications on the planet. And boy, it is a doozy. A doozy which hopefully by the end, will broaden your view and potentially even shift your own approach. So let's begin with a brief primer on how pharmaceuticals in general work. By now, I think most are keen to the experience of taking a medication and shortly after experiencing some sort of reaction which changes your state, hopefully positively, but as we know, it's not always the case. Now. I bet you didn't realize that these magical substances actually work by mimicking or altering an already existing system or pathway in the body. For example, when it comes to the regulation of pain and pleasure, we have this natural system called the endorphin system. And the common pain medications morphine and codeine hack into this system by landing on and binding to the endorphin receptors to work their effects. Pretty interesting, right? Another commonly targeted system is the endocannabinoid system, which regulates a large range of processes, including eating, anxiety, learning and memory, reproduction, metabolism, growth, and development. This system happens to be hacked by everybody's favorite sleepy, happy, hungry drug. Any ideas? Cannabis. And in particular, two of its most popular compounds, THC and CBD. These are just two examples where drugs that work by mimicking a natural neurotransmitter are used to modulate a desired outcome, most of which having some sort of effect on the two most fundamental neurotransmitters that we have. Glutamate, which excites neurons that it lands on, making it easier for them to become activated, and GABA, which does the opposite, calming them down and inhibiting activity. These two neurotransmitters sit downstream from many of the more familiar ones, like serotonin, dopamine, and melatonin. All this is important to understand as we enter this wild tale around the leading class of anti-anxiety medications, benzodiazepines, a family of drugs which left the scientific community scratching their head for quite some time. These drugs, which include Xanax, Valium, and Clonopin, were mistakenly discovered in the 1950s. And it wasn't until the 1970s that researchers even understood how they worked, leaving a solid 20-year period there where they were just like, ha ha ha, 
You, you feeling this, man? Which actually, you know, isn't that rare. Not the feel, the us not understanding. It was eventually found that this class of chill pills worked by attaching to an accessory site on the GABA receptor. Remember, the neurotransmitter which inhibits action, changing its structure in a way that the GABA, which is already there at the receptor, becomes more efficient at its job, essentially making this chillaxing neurotransmitter more chillaxed. Now, here's the head scratching part. Unlike most drugs out there, this class of pharmaceuticals had no apparent natural equivalents. Begging the question if this discovery was just really, really lucky. And that's what a lot of people thought because it was left unsolved with very little progress until an unexpected clue popped up in liver failure patients in the 1980s. One scientist at the NIH who was looking to understand why people with late stage liver failure typically slip into a relatively peaceful sleep-like state called a hepatic coma noticed something funny. The brainwave patterns of his experimental rabbit in hepatic comas look remarkably similar to the brainwave patterns that showed up in animals sedated with heavy doses of benzodiazepines. Huh, you don't say. So an experiment was devised giving these comatose rabbits a drug which reversed the effects of benzodiazepines. And guess what happened? The rabbits woke up, yeah. Here was the first sign of a naturally occurring internal derived benzodiazepine, an endo benzo, so to say. Not long after, other researchers exploring this enigma began to report even more interesting findings. One being that a molecule nearly identical to Valium was discovered in brains of people who couldn't possibly have taken the drug. These were brains that were collected and researched at a brain bank long before Valium was even invented. Now, this finding was eventually shrugged off because Valium and the naturally discovered equivalent both contained a chlorine atom. And the human body does not have the capacity or enzymes to take a chlorine atom and bind it to a carbon. So this stagnated the story once again until 1995, where a group of researchers at the NIH found the missing link. Any guesses? They identified a gut bacterium, which was capable of elevating benzodiazepine-like compounds in the brains of animals. Doing this by producing a precursor that gets converted to an active form once inside the brain. Oh. So our gut microbes have been making natural chill pills this whole time? Slow dripping benzo-like compounds into the bloodstream like an internal IV? Pretty wild, right? There is one more thing though. One more question worth asking. What if a person accidentally kills or disrupts the microbes that are slowly dripping the chill pill? Do they become less chill? Or worse, they become so unchill that they need exogenous benzo drugs just to feel normal? Could our epic levels of gut dysfunction be one of the main reasons for our epic levels of anxiety? Certainly the million dollar question. And although we are not at the scientific point to answer that question with any certainty, the connections are becoming more and more suspicious. Because, as we stated, and asked you to remember all the way back in the beginning of this powwow, our microbiomes are at all-time lows when it comes to health, function, and diversity. And it's mainly due to our blind adherence to modern-day societal norms. The ultra-processed 24-7 eating, the extreme sedentary behavior, the severe nature deficit, use of harsh cleaning supplies and body care items, antibiotic overuse, and chronically deprived sleep ultimately cultivating an internal ecosystem which pushes the agenda of disease and dysfunction, which includes diseases of the mind. Now, although that may sound a little doom and gloom, it really comes down to how you look at it. Because if you haven't noticed, all of those components are very much 
in your control, capable of being manipulated and modulated through habits, routines, and rituals, many of which we talk about across the hundreds of videos on this channel, including the Microbiome 101 playlist, where we talk about all of the ways to get your microbes vibing like they always could, covering the importance of real food, daily movement, getting outside and a little dirty, high quality circadian aligned sleep, exogenous substances, and much, much more. Basically how to live rebelling against those aforementioned societal norms. Because that is very much what it takes to feel how you are capable of feeling. And facts are, you'll never be able to feel that way without your microbes. So help them help you already. Just imagine all the things that they do that we haven't even discovered yet. Yeah, the micro party it's going to get wilder. So you definitely want those internal chill pill capabilities. Just saying.